Hi guys, in April, I'm going to be starting my dividend growth investment portfolio, as I'm sure you already know because I just keep banging on about it. But I've had some ideas of a little series of videos that I can do before I actually start that portfolio in April in the new tax year. A little, a little series of videos just basically where I start planning for that portfolio. Today's video is going to be the first one in this little series and I'm basically going to be having a look into which sectors I want to you know, be in my dividend portfolio and which companies may then fall into those sectors. That's today's video. And then hopefully I'm gonna get your opinions and your advice and all of that good stuff in the comments and maybe that will cause me to make some changes or think about things a little bit differently. And then after that, the next video will be really finalizing those sectors and those companies I'm going to invest in. And in the second video in, in particular, I'm going to be looking at what percentage allocation I want in each sector and in each company. And then the, the final video in the series is going to be me showing you that final portfolio, what I'm going with, what I'm gonna be investing in, the percentage that I'm going to be investing in each sector, and then each company that fall within those sectors. That'll be the final video. So I really hope that's exciting. I'm excited to do this sort of live with you. I've not really done any planning for this video at all. Um, I want it to be quite raw and to see the process I'm going through. So then you can, you know, leave your comments and let me know what you think and if there's any changes that you would make personally. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice and I'm not going to promise that every single comment I then make a change to my portfolio because ultimately it's my money going into it. But I do really appreciate any advice that people can leave, any opinions, you know, maybe even suggesting some companies or some sectors that I haven't thought about today. Because like I said, this is very much filmed on the spot. I've literally just had this idea. So I'm sure I'm gonna miss out some sectors and some companies. So yeah, let's let's jump into it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pull up the notes app on the laptop and film what I'm writing down just as I sort of plan it. So it is gonna be really, really raw, this video. So I hope you like this style anyway. Nice little title there. So ultimately what I want to do is I want to invest Oh, that's good, isn't it? Invest mainly in UK companies. But I do want exposure to US companies as well. It's already annoying me that this isn't formatting very nicely. Yeah, so I want to invest mainly in UK companies, but I do want some exposure to some perhaps dividend US stocks as well. I want to reinvest all dividends and basically grow the portfolio that way. I want to accumulate shares over time in these companies. And the first sort of goal is, I guess, um, making 10 pound a month on average. That will be my first goal. Uh, my second goal, I suppose, will be scaling that up to maybe 50 pound a month and so on. Um, eventually I want to get to the point where I can cover my rent through dividends or mortgage payment or whatever. Um, I'm very aware that that's not going to happen anytime soon. And I also know that growing a dividend portfolio takes time. It takes years, decades, and I'm prepared for that. This is day one. I'm going to be documenting it all. Every month you will see how many dividends I'm bringing in. You'll see what my investments are. You'll see how the portfolio is growing or how it's not doing so great. You know, I'm gonna be sharing all of it because some of my favorite channels on YouTube are actually dividend investor channels, or even not just dividend, but investing channels that are really transparent and really honest and share those, inf those pieces of information. Because as a beginner, that was super helpful for me. It made me realize what was possible and it made me realize you know, how patient you need to be and how committed you need to be and how you need to have a goal and keep working towards it. Because I think it's really easy for a beginner to see you know, someone that's made so much money on a stock or someone living off their dividends and just feel like it's completely unrealistic. But by seeing how they got there, it sort of makes it more doable for you. And that's what I'm trying to show. Um, <coughs> so I've got some sectors written down that I just came up with earlier. Let's just start, let's brainstorm some sectors. So we've got the bank slash financial sector. We've got the consumer goods sector. We have got, I'm gonna put mining as a sector. Um, we can do tech as a sector. I'm not saying these are all like really well-defined sectors. It's just what's coming off my brain. Um, what else have I written down? Pharma. 
pharma slash healthcare. I'm going to write down here. Some of that obviously will go into consumer goods. Um, and then I've also got energy. God, I can't spell. Energy. I'm going to put energy and utilities. What is this doing? Utilities. Um, what else? I'm going to put REITs as its own thing. Uh, is there anything I'm missing here? insurance and I'm going to put food I'm going to put food but I'm not sure if that's something I would really uh no I'll get rid of food I'll get rid of food okay I don't think I'm missing any sectors there I probably am because like I said I've not really spent time researching this um yeah, let me know if I'm literally missing a massive sector that I should be investing into. Please call me out in the comments because I don't want to miss that going forward. So let's have a little look. So what sort of companies could I invest in for the bank financial um, sector? So I could look at, you know, some of the big banks here in the UK, HSBC, uh, Lloyds. Um, they're the ones that come Barclays. They're the ones that come to my mind first. Um, I believe they all pay dividends, but I will definitely obviously check this out. That's what I've got down for banks. I want your opinion though, actually on banks. I don't actually know whether to even include a British bank in my dividend portfolio. I'm not really sure. Something that I'm gonna be deciding, but just for now, there, those are some potential companies I could invest in to represent the bank slash financial sector. Some consumer good companies that come to mind are Diageo, how do I spell this? Like that. Um, Unilever, I mean, I suppose that blends into also maybe some pharma healthcare, but we'll, we'll put it here. As I said, this is not set in stone. Mining, uh, Rio Tinto definitely comes to mind. Tech, tech is my issue here, right? UK, the UK, sorry, is just not very tech driven. We're very back in time compared to the likes of the US. I could think of a million, okay, I'm lying to you here. I could think of like five or six really big tech companies in the US that I would love to invest in. Um, but we don't really have that represented here in the UK. So I'm struggling with this one. And this is exactly the reason why I have put, I might, I've said that I might get some exposure to US stocks in my dividend portfolio as well. It's because I can't really represent tech very well. What I could do is just leave it out of my dividend portfolio and continue to invest in the tech companies that I do through the S&P 500 ETF that I've got with Vanguard because I'm gonna keep that going, you know, I'm gonna be doing this alongside my ETF and my index funds. So basically what my portfolio in the future is gonna look like is my dividend portfolio that I'm gonna primarily have in UK stocks but not exclusively unless I realize that I should I'm gonna have my ETFs and my index funds, which are going to be, again, primarily S&P 500 and FTSE Global All Cap, I think, are the two that I'm gonna really knuckle down to. And then I'm also going to have Tesla and Palantir. Maybe, maybe another one, but yeah, I'm not gonna give up Tesla and I'm not gonna be stopping investing in S&P 500. That is all alongside this. So I don't know whether I am missing a really obvious UK company that falls into the tech sector. I can't think of one off the top of my head. I will need to do some further research. Let me know. Or of course, um, I could put a US company in here and just, you know, have to pay the extra tax on it. I'm really, really not sure. Um, okay, I'm gonna leave that one blank. Let's move on to pharma and healthcare. GSK is the first one that comes to mind for me. And also AstraZeneca. So let me just, I'm just gonna write Astra for this. Astra, no, I'm not. Zeneca. I can't think if there's any others. Maybe, let me know. Uh, right, let's move on to energy and utilities. This is another area that I'm really conflicted with um, because I don't want to support non-renewable energy, but I am very aware of the energy prices that are going up right now and how that would probably be very good for an investor investing in energy and utility companies. And I don't wanna miss out on it. 
But equally, I should be putting my money where my mouth is. And if I don't want to invest in non-renewable energy sources, then I probably shouldn't be investing in them. So I'm not entirely sure. What I'm gonna do is just jot a few things down and make that decision by the next video. I'm gonna put the big ones. I'm gonna put BP. I'm gonna, BP, I'm gonna put Shell. Um, and then I'm also gonna put here renewable. Renewable. Um, renewable energy companies. There are a few that come to mind, but I'm not, I, I only really know renewable energy ETFs. Um, there's a few, there's a few that I can think of that are individual companies that I could invest in, but I'm gonna do more research. Do let me know actually, if you're an investor and you invest in any companies that are in the renewable energy sector, drop me a comment below because I'm always open to suggestions. Also, let's just put a few things down in the utility side of it. So we've got SSE off the top of my head. We've got, Uni is it United Utilities? I hope that's the right word. United Utilities, I think that's what. Do you ever just get a mind blank? Like you literally go to say something and it just, you just forget. And you don't know what the word is anymore or the, what the company's called or, yeah, that happens to me literally every other word. So I'm gonna put that down. I really hope they're called United Utilities. Moving on to REITs, I do want exposure to REITs for sure. Um, we've got, what have we got in the UK? We've got Tritax, it could be an option. We've got um, Big Yellow Box, Yellow Big Box, something like that. I'm gonna put Yellow Box. I'm sure I can figure out what they're called. But the one that I'm really interested in is of course the US one, Realty. Of course I want exposure to them, but again, I don't know how that will look in terms of tax. Um, I know that in the UK, any UK stocks I hold within my ISA will be protected by the ISA wrapper from tax. And I also know that you get that 2000 pound um, annual dividend allowance, everyone gets that, and then you get ta taxed on anything over that. And I know with US stocks, as long as you fill out the form, the W8EN, W8BEN, that form, you know the one I mean, I'm sure, you knock your tax down from 30% to 15%. Something that I need to look into, because obviously, let's just say I put, outside of the REITs, I know taxes on REITs are a little bit different as well, but let's just say I invest in a US, Johnson & Johnson, that's one that I'm thinking about investing in. If I was to only put £100 in Johnson & Johnson to begin with, and then I get taxed 15% of that, or however much it works out to be, is it really worth me holding that in the first place? I don't know. These are these are the dilemmas I'm having. Because most people on YouTube that I'm learning from and that I love watching are US based, and obviously they can invest in Johnson & Johnson with no problem. But I need to think about the tax implications. So maybe that's why I should primarily focus on UK stocks. But I, uh, yeah, okay, so we're gonna put, we'll put that there. And then insurance, what comes to mind is Aviva. Aviva. Um, now let's just think about some US stocks I could invest in. Obviously I've put Realty. Real, Realty. Um, I know Disney are perhaps a great one. Johnson and Johnson, Apple, Microsoft. These are companies that I would love exposure in and I would love them to be part of my dividend portfolio. Just need to think about tax, so tax question mark. I would very much like to think as well as part of these videos, what months um, these these companies pay dividends in. I know that can change and I also want to think about their dividend yield. I am not picking companies based on their dividend yield. That is a no-go for me. I've made loads of videos about the highest dividend yield companies, but I've very much said in those videos that that is not the indicator that you should go on. I should add this back up here actually. I'm investing in good, good quality companies who you know, increase their dividends uh, year on year. If I invest in a company that perhaps doesn't always do that, then I'm okay with that. I want to invest in really good quality companies but I and reinvest the dividends and grow how many shares of that company I own that way. But also it's really important that I invest in growing companies, not stagnant companies that aren't really doing much. Um, that's quite important to me. But I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to compromise. I'm willing to have a few perhaps 
quicker growing companies and some maybe more traditional companies in this portfolio. Um, but yeah, there's just some other companies that come to mind. I could obviously put legal in general. Um, there's the likes of like Tesco and other big supermarkets here in the UK. There, there's options, there's definitely options, but I'm, I'm just trying to just, you know, get a basis of what I could invest in for now. Another area that you'll probably notice that I haven't included is the likes of British American Tobacco um, and other tobacco companies. I don't know, something just, I just don't know why, but I don't really want to invest in those companies. Again, perhaps this is really silly, but I'm, I'm morally conflicted about about investing in non-renewable energy companies and tobacco companies, but clearly not that morally conflicted because I've got Diageo in here. So I don't know. I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you think about this because I do really appreciate all of your comments. And next time I'm going to start finalizing this list and seeing what percentage of each company I want and what percentage of each sector I want to form my portfolio and then moving forward. I'll start finalizing it even further, ready to start investing in April. I'm really, really excited. If you're worried about an upcoming recession or just investing in 2022 in general, watch this video here.